a sermon preached at Chelmsford Cathedral on Sunday the 7th of April 2019 by Nicholas Henshaw in preparation for the annual meeting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is John chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. Just before his final journey to his death, six days later, Jesus has dinner with his friends Mary, Martha and Lazarus. Mary takes costly perfume and anoints the feet of Jesus. She pours out her love for the Lord. And that's at the heart of what I want to say this morning in my report for the year in preparation for the AGM on the 27th of April. My look back at 2018 and forward to the coming year. Our job, as Jesus says explicitly, is to pour out our love. Or as Jesus has it in his summary of the law, to love God and love our neighbour as ourselves. We use a quote from John 20, 21 as the foundation of the cathedral's strategic plan. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Recently, Bishop Stephen has suggested to me that we should place another quote, John 15, 9, alongside it. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. It's a great suggestion. That verse becomes a kind of commentary. As we are sent out, love is our purpose. Love is our meaning. Love is what we have to share. We pour out our love because that's what Jesus does. In a phrase I've used a lot recently, we go where Jesus goes and we do what Jesus does. That's our job, to pour out our love. That, at both its simplest and its most costly, is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. 2018 turned out to be a challenging year here at Chancellor Cathedral, but also a time of real change and opportunity. We have one of the smallest staff teams of any English cathedral, so the fact that we've been at least one full-time canon down for over two years, well, that has come at a cost. And indeed, through 2018, Simon's death continued to have an impact on our life together. Alison's arrival six months ago has come as a real blessing, and with Imogen's appointment, we'll soon have a complete ministry team for the first time in over two years. But the challenges of the last two years have, I suggest, been important and formative. They've certainly stress-tested the cathedral in unexpected ways, and what we've learnt is indeed best captured by that line from John's Gospel, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, abide in my love, pouring out our love at the feet of Jesus. What I really want to celebrate in 2018 is that a cathedral with very limited resources continued to punch above our weight and make a difference. Paid staff, clergy and volunteers alike across every aspect of the cathedral's mission and ministry. So here I want to celebrate our remarkable volunteer force, and I can do no better than to quote a whole paragraph from my sermon at the recent Volunteers Thanksgiving service. I said then, I simply want to say thank you. It is hazardous for me to attempt to name every volunteer group, so I'll talk in areas of work whether we volunteer in the cathedral's outward-facing ministry as workplace chaplains, or in supporting lunchtime concerts, making the cathedral beautiful with flowers, welcoming visitors on Sundays and weekdays, sitting in the nave as a duty chaplain, listening to people's stories, up a scissor lift changing the lights, running a school visit, moving chairs, hoovering the porch, updating the database, ringing the bells to call people to worship, serving in the kitchen, running a great fundraiser, sitting on chapter or one of its committees, developing the largely hidden work of the prayer group, planning the next set of repairs to the chapter house heating, serving at the altar, in the ministries of drawing up rotors for services and activities. Much of this isn't glamorous, I know, but it supports and sustains the ministry of the cathedral at every level. All of that enables us to focus our resources on our core mission and ministry, serving the networks of the city, the county and the diocese as a thriving outward-facing community, the Church of the Bishop, a community shaped by worship and public space for everyone. For me, one of the absolute highlights of 2018 and core to our mission has been the creation of a team of day chaplains, ready and available in the cathedral through the week. That and the hospitality we now extend to rough sleepers are a proud example of what we can deliver. Back to John 15. The mutual love we seek to live by is the message we bear. I love those moments when you read a comment in the visitor's book or get an email about how this place and this community has touched a life, 
started a new stage on their journey, helped them understand something new about what God wants for them. In the spring of next year, we begin another round of stakeholder conversations where, under the guidance of our two new canons, we'll be looking at worship and mission, developing what we already do well and seeking new ways to serve the networks of our community. I'll be saying a bit more about that at the AGM itself on the 27th of April. But for now, just think of what happened here just last Christmas when we saw total attendances in December rise by 11,000 and for the first time had no option but to turn hundreds away from carol services because we were too full. The big opportunity there, and indeed from that amazing 9.30 last Sunday, literally all singing and all dancing, is how we turned contact into engagement. In conclusion, I want to borrow a phrase from the installation of the new Dean of Portsmouth a few weeks ago. Just before the blessing, the Bishop prayed for the cathedral that it would grow in depth, impact and number. To grow in depth, impact and number in that order. As we grow in our desire for God, so we touch and change the world around us. And in turn, others want to join in. In the words of the prophet Zechariah, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.